This project started with identifying the first family with a presumed lasso function mutation, and that is a mutation that uh, removes a gene from an um, individual. We identified a gene called OTUD6B, and what's cool about this project is that um, we, have, we stumbled upon this gene that nobody else has been interested before because nobody really knows what it does. My main function for this particular project was to just put, to find enough families to make a um, convincing case that this is an indeed a gene that is essential for human development. We were able to find collaborators all around the world and it was very cool to be part of this um, team of scientists and clinicians who are um, working towards this common cause. We had families from Palestine, Egypt, um, Syria via France, and um, we had two families from Texas. And we did identify other, other patients who have the same change in their DNA. And then when we looked at all of their clinical characteristics, we saw very striking similarities among these individuals. The main uh, clinical features include severe progressive microcephaly. The ch these heads of these children are very small and they don't grow. And as a consequence of that, they also have severe intellectual disability. They have, um, their brains are not developing normally. We've also seen um, congenital heart defects and um, some abnormalities in their, in their hands and their feet. Our department uh, has a grant uh, that allows us to study, um, that allows us to use animal models for uh, our studies. And we were very fortunate that a uh, animal model for the gene that we are interested in was already um, uh, was already done. So we went into this larger database, so the Baylor College of Medicine and our collaborators at MRC Harwell in the UK, and we had um, characterized a animal model, a mouse model, that had a dysfunction of this particular gene. And in fact, it turned out that it had several overlapping characteristics similar to the patients that had um, these mutations in the same gene. And we could just utilize that data in collaboration with Dr. Heaney and uh, his group and include some studies to corroborate the results that we've seen in the observation that we have made in the affected individuals that we observed with the animal model. For example, we knew looking at our animal models that the gene was highly expressed in the brain and we knew that there were some intellectual capacity issues with the patients. The animals develop cardiovascular defects that are very similar to the patient population. So again, these all match the patient population and provide a very kind of easy way to see that in fact that, the, that this gene does in fact have these effects that we're seeing in the humans. I think the highlight of this project was just the shared collaboration with, collaboration with all these centers and these different labs and just putting this massive effort together and leading it and um, coming up, you know, coming out with a, a publication that I think it's pretty strong. And it really highlights what animal models can do to really understand um, human disease. And if you do it in a very systematic way, like we do in this large international consortium that's involved many investigators at many sites around the world, it really allows us to build a database to when these types of rare disease mutations appear, allows us to go in and say, okay, do we already know whether or not there is um, a phen phenotypic characteristic information about this particular gene in an animal model. And although today there is no cure, with um, studies that go on in these type of situations, you know, we really hope that in a few years we might be able to come up with some type of a, a medicine or a, a cure and of, on some level that will help at least stop the progress of the disorder, if not cure it completely.